In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, annotator to identify markers associated with the cells. So before, uh, before starting annotator, let's have a look at the data. So if we go back to the folder um, downloaded from GitHub, if you go to the data folder, so there are two first folders we use them for training. The last one is entitled Polyps Multiplexed Images, and it contains uh, 14 images, that the images we want to process. Let's open the first one. That's not what I wanted to do. I moved it. Uh, let's open it. All right. And so it's an image with seven channels. The first one is the DAPI. The second one uh, corresponds to Tibet. Third one, CD8. Fourth one, RR Gamma T. Fifth one, uh, CD4. Then FOXP3. And finally, Cytokerat. So um, to do all the processing, we're going to need the nuclei segmentation and the tissue segmentation. So let me first um, create a folder here. Where I'm going to entitle images and I'm going to put all the images in this folder. So let's move them in the folder. And then I'm going to uh, copy and paste uh, the nuclei segmentation. So if I go in codes, my score CNN, datasets, nuclei, combine results, I want to uh, use these ones uh, as um, that's what we got, you know, the best nuclei segmentation. Of course, it could be better, but that's the, the best we obtain. So I'm going to call this one nuclei. And finally, I'm going to also copy uh, the epithelium and stroma segmentation. So it's in UNET, datasets, epithelium stroma, and result classes. So I'm going to copy and paste it here and rename it uh, tissue, for example. All right, now I'm going to open annotator. So I go to plugins. Annotator. And I'm going to open the uh, first image. So if I go to data images, so polyps, multiplexed images, images, and the first one. So it opens it with, with annotator. So as you can see, we can already, uh, so first we can um, look at the different channels. So uh, channel per channel in black and white. I'm going to adjust it. Um, so this is DAPI, for example, this is uh, CD8, and this is our gamma T. So our gamma T is a bit not non-specific, so I'm going to adjust it so uh, I get rid of the background, actually, something like this. Uh, you can also look at different combinations of, of colors, like here, DAPI, CD8, CD4 can remove one, add another one, you get the idea, and then you can put all of them together. So first of all, I'm going to uh, load the nuclei segmentation, so I can go to the object uh, classes panel and hit load and select the corresponding um, nuclei segmentation. You can look, yeah, so it goes pretty fast, and that's what we have here. Uh, I actually like to put this, so I like it in red when I look at the DAPI in black and white, but when I look at all the, 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 the markers, the channels, it's harder to have an idea about what we have, so I'm going to put it in gray, find it easier to, um, to look at. I'm going to also load the region, so epithelium and stroma, so if I go in the region classes, bottom left, hit load, select the corresponding segmentation here that we got with UNET. All right, so that's what we have. So we can remove the region, put them back, remove the nuclei segmentation, remove everything, put back segmentation, etc. Here we have a few things we can do. So let's have a look at it. Uh, first of all, we can do a snapshot, which is going to be actually so your image uh, with um, here, nuclei segmentation and region are overlaid on top of it. This can be um, useful if you want to show the results you got uh, for a presentation or even a figure. 
uh, obviously you can remove the regions for example and only have the nuclei segmentation we can also do um, measurement so measurement is actually extract image features for each nucleus so um, when you hit that it's going to extract image features uh, defined in set measurements so let's go first in analyze and set measurements and let's define different features we want so for example the area centroid coordinates let's say the average intensity in each nucleus now it can be in measurements so it opens a Roy manager and then it's going to extract the three features for each individual nucleus and it's going to put them in a table when it's down which should be soon all right now it's down so if i look at this table i have each line uh, corresponding to one uh, nucleus and so we have first the area then the average intensity for uh, so DAPI Tibet CD8 ROR gamma T CD4 FOXP3 and cytokeratin and then uh, I have the coordinates um, of the nucleus uh, centroid in the image and finally the region class so one for epithelium two for stroma and three for background same order than they are defined so if i so you see we have almost a thousand nuclei in this image that were uh, segmented and so yeah same order so class one uh, if i put them back class one here is in red epithelium class two is in green stroma class three is in blue background so that's just for the when we just consider um, regions and object um, annotations. But now we can uh, try to associate markers with nuclei. So we can change the mode on top. Object annotation, the first one. Now marker annotation. So we still still on the same uh, right panel. So as we are interested in, in markers, we don't need the regions uh, now. So I'm going to get rid of them and then we can add new markers. So let's add a new marker. Then you have a window that pops up with the first question, which kind of marker? So is it nuclear, nuclear membrane or cytoplasmic? So this is a different kind of markers. We see, for example, DAPI is, is, um, is, is nuclear, uh, of course. DAPI um, uh, stains uh, the DNA and the DNA is in the nucleus. So of course, DAPI is nuclear. We, ha we used uh, cytokeratin for the epithelium, for example, cytokeratin is, is cytoplasmic. We see that we have very low signal inside the nucleus, but high signal outside the nucleus when the nucleus is positive for cytokeratin, when it's an epithelial cells. Here we also have uh, CD4 and CD8, but are nuclear membranes. So markers, so when there are nuclear membrane markers are expressed uh, on the membrane. So the way it's down here for both, um, two ways to identify the markers, thresholding and machine learning. I'm going to go back to it. Um, for these different uh, compartments is to look inside the nucleus for nuclear marker, to look a little bit inside the nucleus, a little bit outside the nucleus for nuclear membrane, and outside the nucleus for cytoplasmic markers. So that's the first question. So let's say we want to do um, Tibet, which is in channel two. Tibet, Tibet is nuclear marker. So I'm going to uh, define it as a nuclear marker. And then I can use which method I want to use. So you can manually annotate the, the markers by just selecting them, uh, by clicking the, the, the positive markers. If you, if you want to put them back negative, you can click on it again. There's also a thresholding tool where you um, define a, an intensity threshold and an area threshold uh, such that all the nuclei that have uh, the, the area threshold percentage of pixels that are above the intensity threshold are considered positive. The one we're going to use is a machine learning tool. It's a logistic regression based on the uh, average and standard deviation of intensity, uh, the nucleus uh, size, and the nucleus ellipsity. So I'm going to select machine learning, uh, and Tibet is channel 2. So I'm going to select channel 2. And now I need to uh, define a few positive uh, cells and a few negative cells. So I'm going to first select the channel of interest, which is channel 2 for Tibet. And now I'm going to actually zoom in. 
and select uh, positive markers. So let's say this one, two positive markers. I have one here. So you need to make sure, uh, and, and so that's very important to talk with people that prepare the images so you know how to differentiate positive markers for non-specific fluorescence, for example. That's really important. So here I, I, I defined a few positive cells. I'm now going to define a few negative cells. So if you can have, like this one has a little bit of signal, but I know it's not real, so I'm going to select it as well. This one also. And, and when you are happy with what you have, at least you have a, a small selection, then you can trim your logistic regression. So the first time you do it, it's going to open a row manager to extract all the nuclear, here it's a nuclear marker, so the nuclear areas, and then apply your, your classifier. So here it's, it's very interesting. You see that we have many positive cells that are not, uh, as decided by the classifier, the ones in magenta. And clearly, it seems that uh, the, the big and elongated cells are considered as positive. That happens, I, I told you, we take into account average and standard deviation of intensity, but also the size and, and, and the shape. So sometimes your classifier is going to think, it's going to be trained, it's going to, depending on, on, on the annotation you made, and probably here, I did some positive nuclei that are uh, big and long and no negative. Uh, nuclei, so it considers that all the long uh, nuclei are uh, actually positive. So this is not a problem. You can just select a few of them and define them as negative, and you train your classifier again, and now you see it works fine. So that sometimes, you know, as we use several uh, image features, you can, uh, you know, diverge, converge. So you, you need to make sure that uh, that you select the right one. So now let's. Uh, maybe go a little bit over. It seems that it did a good job. So I think I'm going to be good with that. And you can do that for all the markers. So what I'm going to do now is define a marker for each channel. And then I'm going to train several classifiers. Um, just, uh, I, I, won't, I won't go through everything, so I will cut the video so you don't have to see every single annotation. It's going to take... Doesn't take that much time, but take a little bit of time. It's not very interesting. But first of all, I'm going to um, define the markers. So very simple way: marker one correspond to channel two, and so marker two is going to correspond to channel three, and so on, and to marker six for channel seven. So let's add a new marker. So it's going to be for um, channel three, which is CD8. CD8 is a nuclear membrane marker. So I'm going to select nuclear membrane marker. Still machine learning. And that's channel three. All right, I'm going to define a new marker. So now it's going to be our gamma which is nuclear. So that's that's fine. I'm going to still use machine learning, and it's for channel four. Okay. New marker. So marker four is CD4, which is a nuclear membrane marker. So I'm going to change it. Machine learning, and channel. Five, all right. New marker for uh, channel uh, six, which is FOXP3, which is a nuclear marker. So this is correct. Use still machine learning and uh, channel six. And the last marker, which is going to be cytokeratin. Cytokeratin is cytoplasmic. So I'm going to select cytoplasmic marker, machine learning, and channel seven. All right. So for each marker, I, I'm going to define positive and, and negative markers. Uh, it's also good to do it uh, for several images, just to make sure that it works for different, uh, different times. So I'm going to show you how you can change images, even though for now I just uh, trained the first marker. So that would make sense to train the other markers and then change images. But I can already do it. So I'm going to show you. Uh, you can to do that you need to hit load here in load image and segmentation and you need to define a new input image so i'm going to select the second image for example if i go to images and i say second one and the corresponding uh, segmented so nuclei segmentation in that case so i'm going to go into nuclei select the second one and now it's going to open uh, the, this new image with uh, the segmented nuclei, so I can hit OK. 
And so um, here it's just gonna, uh, as I didn't uh, compute um, nuclear membrane and cytoplasmic markers, it, it's doing it right now. Uh, however, I had just trained the first uh, classifier. I'm gonna have some messages, but it, it's fine. So you see when he opens it, it first extracts the nuclear uh, marker areas to, uh, to train the first, to, to process the first classifier. And, and it identifies the nuclei positive for the first uh, classifier. Now, as I didn't uh, define any positive and negative cells for marker two, I get uh, a message, but it's fine. I can just hit okay. I'm gonna get a message for each of them because I didn't do it for marker three or for marker four or for marker five or for marker six. So of course here, uh, if I look at marker six or marker five, I don't have any positive cells because I didn't train classifiers, it all makes sense. But if I go back to marker one and I just uh, look at channel two, you see there are uh, a, few, um, a few cells that are positive for this marker based on the classifier I trained on the previous image. So now I'm gonna train all the classifiers and, and go through uh, a few images just to make sure that uh, it's, it, it makes sense. And so I'm gonna cut the video now and I will come back with uh, train classifiers. All right, I'm done with uh, training my classifiers. Oh, I, did, I did it a little bit quickly, but here the point is really to see how we can use annotator to extract all these image features. So uh, if I quickly look at the results, um, this is what I have for um, Tibet and for uh, CD8, then RR gamma T. So RR gamma T is definitely trickier because there's quite some non-specificity. Um, then CD4, which is also, it's not as tricky as well RR gamma T, but it's definitely uh, trickier than, than CD, uh, CD8. And then FOXP3, and finally Cytokeret. So now we're gonna batch process the 14 images with these classifiers to extract image features. So if you remember, uh, we did it um, before assigning the markers, we extract image features. So it's gonna work the same way. So we need to, uh, before anything else, define the image features we want to get. Again, with analyze and set measurements, so that's the same than before. So we can keep area even though um, we won't use it. Centroid uh, coordinates, we will use it to do some special distribution analysis. We don't need the average um, intensity, uh, but it could be. So potentially this can be very interesting if you have uh, quantitative markers. So in this particular case, we just have markers to identify positive and negative cells, but you could have markers, especially for if you are interested in different level of proteins, so if you have a marker of this protein, and let's say you want to have a score, so it could be, uh, so you could still use a classifier to have positive and negative cells, and then negative cells would have a value of zero, and then within the positive cells, you could have low intensity, medium intensity, and high intensity. So of course you would have to do some uh, intensity normalization to make sure that everything makes sense, but um, in that uh, case, that can be um, very interesting. In, in our study, we don't have quantitative markers, so I'm gonna uncheck that, especially because if you extract the intensities, it takes a little bit more time. You need to uh, use a Roy, uh, the Roy manager to go through every nuclei to extract the intensity. And as we have several kind of markers, nuclear, cytoplasmic, and um, nuclear membrane, we would extract the intensity for all of them and for the whole cell. So that just takes a little bit more time to process and as we don't need it, we won't do it. So just gonna uh, keep area and centroid and hit okay. And now we can start the batch processing. So we're gonna go through a bunch of questions. First one is, um, do we want to batch process associated objects? So that's exactly what we wanna do. We train classifiers so we can batch process images with these classifiers, so yes. And then follow up question, do we have images that were saved with um, 
annotating markers or do we want to use either the classifier so the, the train classifiers or threshold threshold that would have been defined so here definitely what we want to do so we select the second one do we want to add images to define areas so we have the tissue we have epithelium and stroma so yes we want to use them and do we want to batch process result images so that's definitely an advice i would give to uh, everyone when you do image processing and if you do batch processing it's always better to um, be able to visually inspect your results because you can always uh, process a batch of images uh, if you don't look look at it uh, afterwards it's possible that for example a few images were not processed the correct uh, the correct way maybe a few images have different um, intensity features of this kind of things that uh, would make your whole process fail and uh, if you don't go back to the results you won't be able to to, to find it you, you will just have results so that's very important so we're gonna put yes here and now we're gonna have to define um, different folders the three first one are actually input folders so where where are the input images so i'm going to click on image folder and select image oh i i, I did a typo so i can i'm gonna put it back to images sorry and i'm so i'm gonna select i'm gonna go into images and select it second one is the segmented object images which are the nuclei segmentation so i'm gonna select nuclei go into it select it and finally segmented area images our case it's going to be uh epithelium and stroma so i'm going to select tissue go into it and select it all right um next uh, next folder is the destination folder for the marker associated object images so we're going to apply the classifiers and then um, you can see it we can always save images to um, be able then to open annotator and load this image to see where the, the markers are. So we're gonna um, define a new folder. I'm gonna call markers. All right, so I'm gonna go into it, select it. Then the measurements, so I'm gonna create a new folder that I'm gonna call results. And to it, select it. And finally, uh, the result images for visual inspection. So I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to entitle result images. All right. So now we can go to the next step. So first thing, um, if you know that some markers do not coincide, then you can tell the algorithm not to put them together. So for example, here, we know that uh, cells that are positive for CD4 cannot be also positive for cytokeratin. Same thing for CD8, same thing for uh, Tibet. So I know that marker 6 cytokeratin does not coincide with marker 1 Tibet, marker 2 CD8, marker 4 CD4. So I'm going to add this just to make sure I don't have uh, cells uh, that do not make sense in our study. And the last thing is uh, actually to help for the analysis. Um, so we'll see uh, in the last video about processing um, using our script to process. We use the uh, Akoya uh, R uh, package um, Phenoptor. And if we define combination of single or multiple markers, it really helps um, the settle the setting of of the of, of the of the phenoptor uh, analysis. So we're gonna define all the combination of markers we're interested in, which basically correspond to different kind of cells. So I'm gonna say yes. And now I'm gonna have a little bit of work. So if you want to do it, just bear with me. We're gonna uh, type in all the combination of single and multiple markers we're interested in. So we're gonna start with all combination involving CD4. So first CD4 only, and uh, CD4 is marker four. Okay, so do you want to add? Yes, the next one is gonna be CD4 with FOXP3. All right, CD4 is 
still mark 4, fox b3 is mark 5. Next combination is cd4 with r o r, oops, gamma t. All right, cd4 is mark 4, r o r gamma t is mark 3. Next one is cd4 with r o r gamma t and fox b3. Combination of three markers. cd4 is marker 4, our gamma t marker 3, fox b3 marker 5. Next combination is going to be cd4 and tibet. All right. cd4 marker 4, tibet marker 1. And now we're down for the CD4 combination. We're going to now consider the CD8 combination. So CD8 only, which is marker 2. Then combination of CD8 with ROR, gamma T. All right, so CD8 is marker 2, ROR, gamma T is marker 3. Next, CD8, ROR, gamma T, oops, and Tibet. So, this is marker 2 for CD4, CD8, sorry, marker 3 for ROR, gamma T, and marker 1 for Tibet. All right, next combination is CD8 with Tibet. All right, so it's marker 2 CD8 and marker 1 Tibet. All right, oops, sorry, and the last combination for CD8 is CD8 with Tibet and Fox P3. So it's going to be marker 2 for CD8, marker 1 for Tibet, and marker 5 for Fox B3. All right. So now let's consider the combination of cytokeratin. So first, cytokeratin only, CK for cytokeratin, marker 6. Then cytokeratin with Fox B3. Oops. Fox P3, so it's going to be marker 6 for cytokeratin, marker 5 for Fox P3. And last one, cytokeratin with ROR, gamma T. T. So it's going to be marker 6, cytokeratin, marker 3 for ROR, gamma T. And finally, three single markers. So the first one's going to be Fox P3. Fox P3 is just marker 5. And then ROR gamma T. Which is marker 3. And finally, last one, Tibet. which is marker 1. All right, and now we're good. We define all the different combinations of markers. So I can just say no, and it's going to start batch processing. So it's going to first open the first image, and then the corresponding nuclear segmentation, the corresponding region, uh, so epithelium and stroma, and then apply uh, the different classifiers. So it's going to take a few minutes. I'm going to uh, speed up the video. And I'll be back uh, when everything is done. All right, it's done now. So um, just before looking at the results, if you were to uh, batch process other images, you can just hit batch again and do with the same parameters. So you would change, of course, the folders to have different 
uh, input images, but you can uh, keep the same combination of markers, for example. So I'm going to close annotator. I'm going to have a look at the results. So first of all, we have markers here. And if we look at, what it lo at, at the images generated in this folder, oh, I did the same thing again, sorry. Um, we have six channels for each marker and, and that, that indicates where the positive cells were located. So um, it's just in itself, it's not useful. But if I use annotator, I can actually load an image. So let's say the first one. So I need to load the segmentation because I need to know where the nuclei are. And then I can um, go to marker annotation and I can load the corresponding, sorry, not this one. This is, we did that before. Load object here and the corresponding markers. So if I go to markers and I is the first one. Now I can look, for example, for marker one, where they are located, or marker two, where they are located. So this is not useful in itself, but it's useful if you want to go back to some uh, identification of markers you did to see what it actually, um, what, what were the nuclei actually identified. So I'm gonna close it again. Um, another kind of results is in result images. So it's for um, the uh, visual inspection. So for each image, we have two uh, outputs. So let's look at the first one. First one is actually just the input image with nuclei overlaid on top of this and the regions, epithelium and stroma overlaid on top of it. So we have this for each individual image, but we also have this image where again we have uh, six markers for each marker. So here it's marker one, two, three, four, five, six. And we also have the tissue, uh, so dark blue for background, dark red for epithelium, dark green for stroma. So the only thing is that uh, the colors were not, uh, uh, they're different, they, they were not, uh, the, the, the colors from the input images were not conserved, but this is really easy to do. I'm, I'm gonna show you how you can do it. If you go to, um, macro and I'm, I'm gonna create a macro with a macro recorder so I can then um, do it for other images so I just need to go on top I can go too fast otherwise it closed the window so if I go oh, almost there almost there um, macro and if I open macro recorder I'm just gonna change uh, the colors, so here, if I go to um, first channel, uh, I'm gonna change the lookup table, and the first channel corresponds to Tibet, and Tibet was in uh, red, so I'm gonna change it to green, in green, sorry, in green. <laughs> I'm going to go to the next channel, which uh, was um, CD8, and CD8 was in yellow. So I'm going to go to lookup tables, yellow. All right. Then next channel is ROR Gamma T. ROR Gamma T, if I remember correctly, was in magenta. So let's put it in magenta. Next channel. Uh, is um, CD4, CD4 was in red, so I'm going to go to image, lookup tables, red, next channel is FOXP3, and if I look at here, it's in cyan, it was already in cyan, so I don't need to change it, and finally, last channel, cytokeratin was in greys, so I'm going to change it to greys, and now I have the same colors, so let me just go back to macro recorder, and I'm going to create macro from this. And I did this for nothing. Uh, so if I go back here, uh, so now we have the correct colors. We also have the areas that correspond to the different markers. So for example, 
in white we have cytokeratin which is cytoplasmic so that's why it's it's um, it's surrounding the nuclei and it's larger and we can have several uh, markers together so let's zoom in somewhere here for example here you see we have magenta for our gamma t a nuclear marker and we also have red nuclear membrane for uh, cd4 and uh, here we have cd4 again with cyan so with fox p3 so you can uh, like this you can look at the different um, markers so you can go back to your images and see what it looks like um, if i close this one if i open another one so let's here let's say i'm going to open the second one so now I can just um, apply the macro. I'm going to get the right colors directly. So it's, it's, it's easy to change the colors. So this is again for visual inspection. Now, the last folder that was generated is the folder with the results. So let's open it. So we have for each image, we have two files one which is uh, for areas I'm going to open it first because it's it's very straightforward we only have uh, so we have the three regions region one epithelium stroma and region three background and we have the area for each of the region for this particular image and we'll use this information for the processing uh, of, of the data the other file is similar to what we had uh, before so in that case, we have one line for each nucleus. We start with the area and the coordinates of uh, the centroids. So the features that were defined in the measurements. And then we have uh, so the region class. So again, one for epithelium, two for stroma, three for um, background. And then we have object marker one, which, is, uh, which will correspond to Tibet, marker two, CD8, marker three, Aurora Gamma T, marker 4 CD4, marker 5 Fox P3, and marker 6 Cytokeratin. And then we have the combination of, of single and multiple markers that we define. So here we're going to have all the CD4 positive cells, here all the CD4 Fox P3 uh, cells, etc. So we can also check, for example, here I have the CD8. And if I go back, we have the here object marker 2 which is actually CD8 which, which is positive and so we have this for all the combination we we, uh, we actually define for the batch processing so let's let's look at uh, multiple markers for example so of course we we have a lot of uh, cytokeratin positive in the polyp we have lots of epithelial cells so here I'm in uh, column P. Column P is no, it's just CD8. Uh, let's just look for one combination of marker and see with the different marker what we have. Like this one, it's W. So if I go back, I guess I have J and G. So W is cytokeratin and our gamma T. J is marker 6, cytokeratin. And G is marker 3, that's our R gamma T. So we have all this information for each individual nucleus. So for this particular images, we had 7,761 nuclei. So you see a lot, a lot of information that we can process. So we'll see in the last video how we can use these results to, um, to generate figures to summarize the different populations of cells and to do some special distribution analysis.